A few years ago, the Rays owners tried to build a new stadium in St. Petersburg and got punched in the nose. So don't be surprised if their pitch for a new stadium in Ebor goes something like this. Hey, you guys. Oh, my nose! Yeah, like it or not, the Rays campaign for a new stadium could fizzle faster than a Jeb Bush pep rally. Please clap. Yeah, the Rays owners have some big problems they're going to have to solve here to bring their dream to life. First, their plan at this point is not really a plan. It's more like a goal. A shiny new stadium for nearly $900 million. Great. How do you do it? They say, well, I don't know. That's where you come in. If the team can't see how that can make people wince, this classic moment from the Ali G show could drive it home. It's a hoverboard. That's Sasha Baron Cohen playing a fool, pitching his Back to the Future inspired hoverboard to real investors. No one has even thought about making that thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the investor asks, how does it work? To which he says, that's where you come in. You come up with the science. We don't do that. And likewise, when a baseball owner says, we come up with the dream, you come up with a plan and no telling how much of the money, well, politicians and taxpayers will say, we don't do that. I'm hoping someone else is going to pay for it. The next problem for the Rays is that they have not said how much money they will pay for it. Compare that to the Atlanta Braves. They worked up the math and the terms on the front end, $672 million total. And the Braves said they would also pay for more than half of that. The Atlanta Braves committed $372 million from the team, and they still at that point faced a good deal of backlash from taxpayers. Who took the money that we voted for for parks, and now they're playing for this, for this playground for rich jocks. $672 million for the Atlanta Braves new stadium compared to $892 million for the Rays for a much smaller park with a see-through roof. The Braves guaranteed more than half of their new stadium while the Rays have not said how much they would spend. That won't exactly help their case. And if they expect politicians to find the money by raising or diverting taxes from tourists, they should also expect the companies that serve those tourists to push back. And they have a lot of political clout, which also will not help their case. And neither will the parking questions and traffic worries along I-4. The parking situation is an issue and it's a problem. And I think something does need to be done about it. Well, the Rays have said there would certainly be enough parking if you don't mind walking 10 to 20 minutes. There are tons of spaces you know, within a 10 minute walk of the ballpark. But then again, in the heat and humidity of summer, people may not want to walk that far. And our community has not invested in light rail and mass transit as other major league cities have. Had the raise and politicians figured out which taxes or fees they want to raise or divert on the front end, they could have also tried to bundle the stadium with other projects like mass transit, then made the case of how one could feed the other. And with that, maybe win over support from non-baseball fans along the way. Like it or not, that's how you get things done, typically in politics. And even now, the politicians who love this new design will balk if it does not pay off for taxpayers. We need to be prepared to walk away. So the Rays owners should know they have a lot working against them here, just as the team does, often playing in the toughest division in baseball. This year, the Rays players certainly are showing hustle and smarts and exceeding expectations and proving their critics wrong so far. And if they hope to get a new stadium, their owners will have to do the same.